Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another edition of PSVR News. We got some of the juiciest news for you today, so without further ado, let's just jump right into topic number one. Dreams Virtual Reality Support has finally been confirmed to be coming on the 22nd of July, which is fantastic news. I am so excited about this game, getting Virtual Reality Support. Dreams, of course, released in February. They promised that it would have PS viewer support eventually. That was supposed to come out launched, but it got pushed back. Now we know for sure it's coming at the end of the month. Uh, not too much longer to wait now, just a couple 20 days or so, you know? So here's what you need to know about this update, and this information comes from the PS blog. Dreams players will be able to download a free update that enables PlayStation virtual reality compatibility in Dreams with new tutorials, how-tos, and kits to get you started when creating with the PSVR system, plus new content to play from Media Molecule. So we get confirmation that there's going to be brand new tutorials specific for virtual reality, which I think is great. It's going to help us get to terms with the, the controls, the, you know, what makes it different, you know, because we're going to have to change the way Dreams games are made for virtual reality. I'm sure there's going to be certain concessions or certain uh, considerations that you need to take into account to make a virtual reality level compared to a just standard flat level so that's great i'm happy that's there now of course we also got this new gameplay trailer that's playing behind me it's only a minute long or so but this is gameplay footage that was captured from a ps4 pro and i must say it looks really good and you can see that breakfast that famous fry up in high detail and I'm relieved to see that it looks like it's still in very high detail, so I was expecting maybe that if assets were even allowed to be brought into viewer in the first place, which it looks like they are, I was worried that they'd be downgraded significantly so that, you know, the, the viewer headset could render them or the PlayStation could power that, if you know what I mean. So it seems to be the case that, yes, these assets that were in flat can be transferred over to virtual reality levels and that they won't suffer. At least this one didn't suffer. So let's read a little more from the blog. When it comes to create mode in virtual reality, sculpting is truly unique, allowing you to bring your dreams to life around you. If you have PlayStation Move controllers, you'll find sculpting in virtual reality is a very one-to-one -one experience and lets you fully immerse in the creation process. Of course, you don't need to be in VR to create for PSVR and non-PSVR users will benefit from the updates as well. We're introducing a handful of new gadgets to create mode and a full slate of accessibility features, including comfort mode, vignette strength, static sky, and more to make the experience of playing and creating as great as possible. So this is all great news to me as far as I'm concerned. It's really cool to hear that sculpting is gonna feel like a one-to-one -one experience. The thing you're creating is gonna feel like it's there in front of you. I imagine people who enjoy the sculpting now, especially if they use the move controllers, they'd be really excited to be able to do that in virtual reality. But I'm super excited to hear that you don't even need the VR headset to make stuff for VR. So the people who have already gotten good at making things for flat dreams, they can make things and then transfer them over to virtual reality. And that, I think that's great. That means they don't have to learn everything again from scratch. It means that even if I wanted, if I preferred the DualShock making things flat and then playing them in virtual reality, that's a possibility, that's something you can do. I think that's great. I'm very relieved to hear that. It is also nice to see the comfort settings there, the vignettes, something, all that kind of stuff, the stuff that we're used to now. Of course, I just hope anytime I see these things, I just want there to be an option, just the option to disable them if I don't want them, so that the player can disable them if they don't want them. As long as that's there, I'm happy. Our creative community will be able to specify if their content is playable in virtual reality or not. And user-generated content in Dreams will ask for a comfort rating from players, so you'll be able to see what games are the best experience in virtual reality. We're incredibly excited to see the experiences the Dreams community will create, and we've been busy making sure we give them the right tools to make that possible. So I really like the idea that you make a virtual reality level, you publish it out there, anyone who plays that can give it a comfort rating. So if they found it that it didn't make them sick at all, they can give it like a 10 out of 10, assuming. And if it made them pukey or whatever, they can give it a one or two or whatever. I like that idea so that people can get an idea. People who suffer from motion sickness is not really gonna affect me, I don't think. But people who are susceptible to VR sickness, they can see, oh, maybe I should skip this one. It might be a bit too intense, you know? Uh, that's a really cool idea. And honestly, all this news has made me just super excited for Dreams Virtual Reality. It was one of my most anticipated games last year, of course, it got delayed to this year. And even now, I'm more excited for this than I am for Iron Man and even Star Wars Squadrons. 
think this game has so much potential and I just cannot wait to see what other people make. I'm going to try and make my own thing too and hopefully that will turn out somewhat playable. Uh, but even if whatever I create is just trash, I know that there is people out there talented enough to make compelling experiences and a game like this that lets you make games is just so much content there, especially if this gets supported on PS5, which it almost certainly will. We're talking about a game, the perfect game for virtual reality, if you ask me. So let me know down below, are you in agreement with me? Is this something you're very excited for? Or is this to, you know, not your style, you're not interested in this, you want your games made by AAA developers or whatever, not just by randoms. Or... Let me know in the comments below what you think about Dreams, are you excited, you're not, etc, etc. Moving on to topic number two then. Iron Man Virtual Reality reviews are going live as we speak. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to get an early copy to review myself. However, these reviews are going live right now, so let's look, take a look at what these guys are saying. So IGN have given the game a 7 out of 10, saying that although it doesn't reach the lofty bar of something like a Spider-Man for PS4, and mission and enemy variety ran thin by the end of the game, it was still fun to dogfight in the Iron Man suit. Upload VR gave the game 4 stars, praising the intense combats and great characters and story, but criticizing the awful loading times and the move controllers themselves. PSVR Underground gave it a 7.9 out of 10, praising story, combat and controls, but criticizing load times, frame drops and reused environments. Dave Station VR praised the game for making you feel like Iron Man and an enjoyable enough story, although he did criticize the game for overly long loading screens, some clunky VR interactions outside of flying and combat, and some disappointing graphics, particularly the Shanghai City stage. PSVR Without Parole praised flying around as Iron Man and the game's combat also, but acknowledged the game has many flaws too, particularly when you're out of the suit as Tony Stark. They also point out the excessive and lengthy loading screens and even some performance issues at times. In the end, they gave it an 8.4 out of 10. So it seems like the general consensus out there for Iron Man viewer right now is that combat is great, flying is great, visuals are kind of a mixed bag, loading screens are atrocious. Apparently that's something that they all had in common. They all hated the loading screens and there's too many of them and they're too lengthy and that they broke up the flow of the game. But still gave it a decent enough rating when they did give scores, sevens, eights, you know, it's not bad. So Iron Man VR comes out tomorrow, July 3rd. Let me know in the comments, are these reviews gonna affect your purchase in either way? Are you gonna not buy it now? Are you definitely gonna buy it now? Or do you just not care about reviews? You're gonna decide for yourself. Let me know down below. Moving on to topic number three. So topic number three is a pretty quick one, it is just that First Contact Entertainment have come out on Twitter and confirmed that Solaris, when it comes to PSVR, will indeed support the AIM controller. This isn't really much of a, of a surprise considering Firewall, which is First Contact's first game for PSVR, also made great use of the PS AIM controller, if you ask me the best use of the PS AIM controller, that game really comes alive with that controller. But this news does make me wonder, are we going to have the same situation as we did in Firewall, where only the AIM and DualShock 4 controller are supported, and not the Move controllers, because basically the AIM controllers and the DualShocks both have the sticks, and that gives them the advantage over the Move controllers. I wonder will they do the same thing there again. It seems likely if they care about competition, that is, but if not, then maybe, you know, they'll let it, let it up to the players, you know, let them decide. What do you guys think about this? Do you think there should be Move controllers, or do you think it should be Firewall style, AIM controllers and DualShock only? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, let's move on to topic number four. And once again, I have got an Alvo update that is kind of like another setback. Basically, this game keeps getting hit with setbacks. All they want to do is get the open beta up on the PS Store so that we can play it. But Sony seems to just keep putting roadblocks up in front of them. We've got another one here. I'm just going to read out the post that Demolition Sean put up on their Discord so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Update from developers. Normally, virtual reality games go through two phases with Sony. The first being VR consultation, the second being FQA. Now, just let me put a quick note there. I'm pretty sure the FQA means functionality, quality, insurance. I know the QA means quality assurance. I'm just think that that means the F part means functionality. That's not really too important though. Let me just keep going. In the height of the COVID-19 lockdown, they were given an automatic pass for V or C and putting games directly into FQA. Now that things have eased up a bit, they are making virtual reality games go through the standard process of consultation and FQA. We have our VRC booked for July 15th. We are going to be uploading the code today and alerting Sony in hopes that maybe 
they will review it for VRC before then. We feel we are ready for FQA, but have to go along with whatever Sony report back. So it looks like this is another roadblock put in front of Merton Pole Studios and we're going to have to wait until at, at the earliest, the second half of July, before we see this game coming up on the store as, as just the open beta gets up on the store. And now if I'm understanding this correctly, they did say that they've uploaded the build anyway. So there is hope that Sony, uh, the FQA department, will be going through the build that they've uploaded so that that can be ready once the consultation is done. But that's a hope, that's like a maybe, there's no guarantee, maybe that consultation has to happen first before Sony will even start doing the QA part. I'm not sure how it works. Uh, it's Sony very secretive, I guess, about their processes. So I'm just starting to think that we'll be lucky if we see this beta before August at the earliest, the way things are going now. In the meantime, however, Alvo's Twitter has been kind of keeping us entertained by uploading snippets of the game's features and functionalities and whatnot. They've been teasing these attack dogs we've finally getting some glimpse of these guys in action we've also got the uh, a screenshot of a new drone in action uh, so it looks like we're going to be using drones so they're still working on the game while all these delays are going on uh, so there is progress being made on the game so it's not all doom and gloom stuff is still happening so don't worry about that aspect of it and so that is it for this episode of PS VR News. Thank you very much for watching. But before I go, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Thanks to their generosity. They're helping me improve this channel, basically. And in particular, let me give a shout out to the top tier Patreons over there. We've got Chopped517, Mr. Crumb, Columbus Thomas III, Pete Hawkins and Tradition. Thank you very much for that support over on the top tier, over on Patreon. If you want to support too, the link will be in the description below. But if not, I'll be happy with just the likes, subscribes, all that usual shite. One last thing before I go is to thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all these videos. If you want to check out his music, the link will be in the description as well. That's Decepticon.com. He's on the Spotify, the Bandcamp, so all the places you want to listen to your music. And that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, please stay voice.